I thought what I'd do is a variation on the idea that I put forward in this short tutorial. So I'll try and keep this short again and just show a slightly different approach. So as I did before I'm going to set the document setup and I'm going to give it a square aspect ratio so we can export as a HDRI which can then be accepted back in Bryce. I'm going to get rid of the infinite plane, I'll just delete that and I'm going to change the render options to panoramic projection. I'll create a standard Bryce sphere, modify the material, get rid of the diffusion, make it fully reflective and I'm going to make it fully transparent and the idea behind that is I can trap light inside this sphere apparently, right, that's the overhead view, by putting the sphere around the camera then what is gets seen through the skin of this sphere then gets reflected back. Um, if I give this a render now you see there's rather a lot there and uh, we're not seeing anything so what I need to do is start reducing the brightness of the environment. So if I go in sky and fog hold the alt key down, we'll get rid of the clouds. You can see a bit in the preview, but bear in mind that's a ray depth, maximum ray depth of 3 for previewing, and we've got a maximum ray depth of 6. And it will go to the maximum ray depth because there's all the reflections inside this. So I'm going to modify this to custom sky and set these values for the custom sky to fully black. Now you can see we're getting down to the what I want to show in this render, and this is the horizon, but it's being distorted by the ref inter reflections within the sphere. That's the sun. I don't necessarily want the sun involved in this, so I'll go into the Skylab, get rid of the sun as a visible object, go to the atmosphere, modify this thickness of the horizon line and the density so it makes it somewhat fainter, um, blend with sun, and I'm going to change the sun's colour to red. So now the position of the sun will start affecting the appearance of th of these lines and changing the colour. So this is the haze line where the sun is and all these reflections and counter reflections have created this uh, sort of shifting colour balance. So that I'm going to export as my HDRI image. So I've got a file, export image, select HDR and then I'm going to save that as HDR1 OK, and then go into the Skylab, image base lighting, use HDR image, and I'm going to open the one I've just saved, which is there, HDR1. And I'm going to add that to the sky. Now, when you load the HDR image, it automatically disables the haze. So there's the haze disabled. But we've, we've got these lines overlapping one another. And depending how the HDR image is orientated, will this then depend how these lines overlap within the mirrored sphere and it also affects where is affected by the position of the sphere itself so if I move the sphere the way those lines o o interact changes again so this is uh, there's quite a lot of variables if, even though the process is very simple and we're only one iteration in so you can rotate it and if you say well let's say we like this pattern we want to add something else something more a different color we can enable the haze again and change it to some other colour. Let's change it to green to really show up then. And then if that's been added in, it's quite a dark green actually, I'll make it a bit brighter so we can see that just there. But if we wanted these new lines to be a bit brighter and the, the previous ones to be darker, if we're going to go through another iteration because as things add, get added together to get brighter, what I need to do is use this intensity control to reduce the intensity of the backdrop relative to these new horizon lines that I've added. So I can have this as a faint background detail and these new ones will show up better. And at this point, let it render out. Once it's completed a full pass in one go, you can export it as a HDRI image. So export image. It's already remembered I wanted HDRI, so I'll call that um, HDR2. OK. And then I go back into the Skylab image based lighting, open HDR2, and then I choose add to sky. And if it's looking a bit faint, I'll increase the intensity back up to 5. And then now you can see things have got really quite complex. At this point, we've got the choice. We can try reducing the intensity here. Obviously, the preview is not doing it to the same level, and that will reduce the brightness slightly. All these overlapping things is getting quite bright. Or, in the render options, we could reduce the maximum ray depth to re reduce the amount of interreflections. That will simplify things a little bit. So, this has created quite a, well, quite a different kind of render to what you would normally see in Bryce, I would say. And again, you've always got the option of 
adding back in your haze color so you could change the haze color again so you can have another overlapping set of lines for example and you could continue capturing this and overlaying it and making modifications you also have the option of moving the sphere around to different position to change the effect of the pattern as uh, as it gets closer to the origin of the camera you'll find that the, the more parts of the pattern overlap in certain places so you can see the horizon's getting doubled up now because of that position you can also uh, squash the sphere to change the effect or change it to a different primitive like uh, toruses or squares you can experiment with that so this is quite a, a wide variety of things you can you can do uh, at, at each stage bearing in mind you can change it and export each time and there is something else you can do at this stage opposing right you could want to convert that image into a spherical map that you could feed back into Bryce then you just simply go to the document setup and change the aspect ratio to 2 to 1 and although this isn't this will be accepted as a spherical map but it won't be a spherical map there'll be a degree of distortion because this, uh, I think this is a cylindrical map when you do a panoramic projection but still Bryce will accept this providing you save it as a HDR format allow it to render out in one go a file export the images HDR3 now I don't know where that will work since I cut backwards and forwards there but we'll give it a go there's the file oh yes it's gone in okay and we can add that to the sky and then that in turn will be accepted and you'll have slightly different distortions from the interpretation of one as an angular map and the other one as a spherical map even though they are not in this case the same so if I delete that mirror altogether you can see that's just the background that we've created and then you can add something into that scene or use it as a light source so it really is a lot of scope for experimentation with this if that looks rather dim you can increase the intensity how you like once it's back in uh, the lab here this uh, you can use any of the controls that are relevant to image based lighting so there you go that's uh, another alternative way of in importing exporting and importing HDRI format images back into Bryce and adding them to one another to create an effect